Good afternoon. It's Sunday afternoon, San Antonio, Texas. You know, I got up and I read the paper this morning, and uh, <laughs> it was like I was in bizarro world. Every day I read it, and it seems like uh, I'm asking myself the question, what's the next crazy thing that's going to happen? And not only in this country, in this whole world. And, uh, you know, things are getting so bizarre and so out of touch with reality. I asked a, a gal in graduate school yesterday, I asked her what she was majoring in, and she told me she was uh, for law and constitutional law. I said, oh, that's great. I said, uh, what worldview do you come from? She didn't have a clue what I was talking about. And so I had to explain it to her. I says, well, how do you determine, you know, what's legal and what's not, or what's right and what's wrong? If you don't have a, a, a worldview that's based on your presuppositions that have answered the perennial questions of life. And by the time I finished that sentence, she was, she didn't have a clue. They don't teach that anymore because anything goes. So I just asked her a simple question. Let me, I said, let me ask you this. If I told you that I was a woman, would you believe that? <laughs> her response stunned me. She said, well, that's your reality. I said, but it's not true. I said, I'm a man, you're a woman. If you were to tell me that you were a man, that would not be true. And then I proceeded to tell her that all truth is God's truth, and he gives it a different friends. And I diagrammed the chart for her, and her eyes got real big and opened up and made a lot of sense, you know. But we live in a time where, where, where reality and what's true is in flux. And I'm so thankful that we have God's word that we can come to in all seriousness. And everything in here is absolutely true. You know, and so in a bizarre world where everything is going crazy and everybody has this uh, distorted view of reality, I can come get grounded in the Word of God and on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, God says, without faith, it is impossible to please me. Okay, so everything we do, we should be doing in such a way that it's pleasing the Lord. That means we need to operate in faith in many ways. I just want to thank one person here right now. You know, this person has asked to remain anonymous, and but I just want to say thank you. Uh, I had mentioned on my last video that uh, I was all excited because I was able to put a wireless mic and get further back and okay now I'm going to be able to get a whiteboard and start diagramming and it's going to enhance my teaching. Well, uh, led by the Holy Spirit, this person felt uh, led to provide the funds for that particular uh, whiteboard that I'm going to get and I ordered one. and and all that. So pretty soon we're going to be doing all that and that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to really get into the word there. And then I can diagram and show stuff on the whiteboard, things that I can do uh, that I can't do just talking. Okay, it, it really helps in learning and remembering when you have visual aids of various sorts. Okay, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. We're going to introduce you to the doctrine of pneumatology. Say that word with me. Pneumatology is not a bad word, it's a big word, but it's a big theological word that first graders can know. Pneumatology, it's the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Okay, as we read through the Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament, we read that the Holy Spirit is a person and that he's God. He's part of the Trinity. We also read that he does different things at different times, okay? In the Old Testament, he would come and go, and he would empower various saints, like Samson and David, for purposes uh, designed to honor and glorify God. 
Uh, he did with David when he helped him to kill Goliath. He did it with Samson when he, you know, pushed the walls apart. So the Holy Spirit would come and go, and he would empower various people. He would empower prophets to speak as if it was God speaking. And today he's doing a whole different thing, okay? And so Jesus is going to introduce the disciples to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And this is foreign to them because remember the disciples haven't any kind of clue as to what the church is. And the church is the body of Christ that is made up of Jews and Gentiles. Okay, there is no distinction. Okay, people that try to make distinction today have not read the New Testament. Okay. There is no distinction in the body of Christ, all that have professed and that have put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior are part of the body of Christ. You can't say, well, I'm this or I'm that anymore. They tried to do that in, in, in uh, the book of Galatians and Paul put them to bed real quick. In fact, he told them so much so almost sarcastically because they were saying in order to be complete Jew, you got to be circumcised or a complete Christian. And he says, well, if that's true, why don't you just go ahead and emasculate yourself? You know, you're going to start in faith. You're going to finish in the flesh. Go ahead and do it. And of course, he was being fetishious. But there's no Jew and Gentile. The Holy Spirit is going to come and he's going to he's going to do something different that he's never done before. OK, and that's what I'm going to begin to talk about. And so pay close attention. <laughs> Because a lot of people, I'll tell you, more denominations are going all over the place, mainly because of uh, erroneous views concerning what the Holy Spirit does and doesn't do, okay, and who he is and who he's not. And so I'm going to clear all that up for you um, starting today, and then we're going to continue on that. But we're, you want to turn in your Bibles, we're in John chapter 14 and verse 15. And let me read a little bit, and I'll, I'll give you some explanation. I'm hoping you're following along, and on your own, you're beginning to learn how to do some inductive Bible study where you do observation, interpretation, application. Observation is just looking for facts, observing what's there, not inventing. Interpretation is just discover meaning, not inventing meaning. And application is putting that which you have discovered into practice in a practical way. That you do by faith, and that's what in turn gives you wisdom and illumination, okay? Which the Holy Spirit is going to do, and he's going to help you to do that. So it's real important to understand the disciple-making process and how you can grow as a believer. Okay, let me see here. Okay, okay, good. So I know I'm live because I heard somebody say something. At least we got that part taken care of. Okay. Uh, verse 15, if you love me, Jesus is speaking, you will keep my commandments. Well, that stands to reason. If you love somebody, you're going to do what they say. But if you tell somebody you love them and you go against what they say, you don't love that person. You know, you're just talking. But Jesus says, you're going to demonstrate your love to me by your obedience. Okay, you hear the old song, oh him, trust and obey, there's no way. Basically, that's it. Okay, so he says, if you, if, if you love me, and there's the hypothetical, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Keep them, you know, not sometime, but all the time. Okay, and he says then, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. So once you get the Holy Spirit, and which is what he's talking about, he's being with you forever in heaven, here and then in heaven, not to hell. He's not going to be with you and then you're going to go to hell. So that's one verse that you can find that assures you of assurance of salvation, that you're eternally secure. He's going to be with you forever. Once you get the Holy Spirit, that's it. You can't leave. Okay. That is, and now he's going to clarify who he's speaking of concerning the helper. Or what I would call, in the Greek, it's called a paraclete. A paraclete, one that comes alongside. You know, it's someone that's like your best friend. Uh, 
who is going to come and he will lay down his life for you. Okay, this person is going to stick to you as close as a brother and he's going to walk with you. That's the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. That is the spirit of proof whom the world cannot receive. Not possible for the world to receive because it does not hold him or know him. But Jesus tells his disciples, he says, but you know him because he abides with you. He's made his home with you and will be in you. Where is the Holy Spirit? He comes in us. He's there and he stays there. Not like in the Old Testament times, okay? And Jesus says to them, because, you know, they know he's leaving. They just don't know where he's going. And so they're beginning to feel concerned, just like a child whose parents are going to suddenly uh, seem like they abandon them and leave them as orphans. And Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. After a little while, the world will behold me no more, but you will behold me because I live and you shall live also. And that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. So where is God the Father? He's in you. Where is Jesus Christ? He's in you. Where is the Holy Spirit? He's in you. Okay, how do you relate to them? You pray to the Father in Jesus' name as the Holy Spirit petitions you to speak to him in prayer. Okay? All real prayer begins in heaven. He burns you with his desire. You pray your desire back to him. He then grants you the desire of your heart. It's just that simple. But it requires obedience, trust, faith, and it requires that you follow that process. Okay? He says, in that day you shall know that I'm in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. So that's a family. Okay? There's that communion that's going to take place between you and the Father, you and Jesus, and you and the Holy Spirit. Okay? He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me again again. He's not being redundant, but he's trying to make the point that if you really love the Lord, you're going to be obedient to him. Okay? It doesn't make you, uh, you know, a child of God. You already are a child of God. It makes you an abiding child of God with a good relationship. Okay? He who loves me shall be loved by my father and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. That's a tremendous promise. You know, a lot of people don't, they go their whole Christian life and not really know Jesus. You know, and the reason for that is because they don't abide with him. It's simple. What does it mean to abide? It means to stay in close proximity, to have fellowship with. You know, when you invite guests over uh, for dinner, you're having fellowship and you're eating and you're laughing and you're telling jokes and you're sharing stories and all that. That's that kind of intimate fellowship where it creates bonding. Or if you have to go to war with somebody or you got to go through suffering with somebody. You know, and the Bible says when one suffer, we all suffer. We have that common bond as a family to do things together. And that's what he's talking about. And Jesus says, I'm going to disclose things to you. Disclose means give you insight about that which you would otherwise not know. Now, how do we get that? We get it from his word. Well, what does Jesus do? He's going to send the Holy Spirit that it's going to open our eyes and art to this truth. But that in itself doesn't get us disclosed. You have to obey it. It's only when you apply obedience that you then get understanding and wisdom. A lot of people say, hey, Jesus, tell me what you want me to do, and then I'll do it. And Jesus says, no. You tell me you're going to do whatever I say and commit to it, then you're going to learn why I said it. Okay, and that's just the way it is, and that's we do by faith. Now Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, what then has happened that you are going to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered and said to him, if Again, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Now, that's the third time he said that. Okay? Now, I talk to people that are professing believers, and they, they talk all this talk, and they know all the cliches and all that, but they're not obedient. You don't see any real change in their lives. 
You never see him really being about the Lord's work, whether it's true evangelism or true mercy or true helps or true standing up for righteousness sake. You don't see that. There's an absence of a demonstration of a new life in Christ in them. Okay, so this is the third time he's saying that. And, and, and generally when somebody does it three times, again, he's not being redundant. He's doing it for emphasis. He says to him, if anyone loves me, and it has to do with love, we love him because he first, what? Loved us. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. Just imagine the God of all creation, the creator, exhibiting and giving to you all his love. You ever felt that? Man, I'm, sometimes I'm just so, oh my goodness. So I lay in bed late at night and I just sense God's big hands and arms around me and, his love, and I'm lost in that. I'm completely saved and protected and secure and embodied. And it's not some kind of mystical, superstitious feeling. It's real. Okay? God is real. And he says he will love us. You ain't even going to experience that if you don't obey him. You know? It's just like a little child crawling up in his daddy's lap, huh? And putting his arm around him. And, you know, and just stand there in his bosom. That's what it's like. He says, my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him. Now that we're going to make ourselves at home with you. Yeah, I mean, it's a new apartment. Jesus lives here. <laughs> so does the father and the Holy Spirit. They live here with me. On occasion, I get visits by angels. I haven't seen them. But I'm sure they're probably here. They're looking at me. <laughs> Manny, what are you doing? So I'm aware of their presence, okay? You ever, there's a book that was written by Lawrence so many years ago. It's called Practicing the Presence of God. Now, we know that God is omnipresence, okay? That means he's everywhere at the same time. But it seems kind of, you know, intellectually distant. But when you practice that he's right here, right now, you know, you're going to be careful what you say, think, and do, uh, okay? Because you want to be pleasing to him. So I talk to him all the time, you know, about everything. I talk to him about this message. He said, Lord, help me give him the right words. I won't say anything, stick my foot in my mouth that I'm going to regret. Okay. <laughs> I'll probably do it anyway. But, uh, and, and Jesus said, that's okay, Manny, you're doing good. Keep it up. <laughs> so, you keep preaching my word and teaching. I know you're not perfect, but I'm going to bless what you have to say. Okay. Now, he says this, he who does not love me does not keep my words, conversely, okay? And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. So what Jesus is saying, what I'm telling you, disciples, is what the Father told me to tell you. And that's what I'm doing. And these things I've spoken to you while abiding with you. I'm here with you, physically present with the disciples right now. Okay, and he's getting ready to leave. You know, you know you're going to leave your family, you're going off to war, you're going to a business trip, you're going to be away for a long time. Or even if you're, you know, may never come back. You're going to be very careful what you tell your family and those close to you. And that's what Jesus says. Now here in verse 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, not somebody else's name, not Buddha, not Muhammad, you know. The Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things. Now, he's not saying he's going to replace education. That's not what he means here. Oh, I am people that, well, you just get up and open the Bible and the Holy Spirit will just speak to you. Yeah, go for it. And then they blabber and stumble and fall all over the place. Listen, what the Holy Spirit does is not a part from the cognitive, but a part of the natural cognitive process. You want to be a good speaker and teacher, the Holy Spirit will guide you in your preparation process, in your study process. And people don't want to study. Fine, but the Holy Spirit isn't going to help you any. But he comes along as a tutor. 
okay? And he'll help you. You don't have to be at the level I am, okay? I've been doing this for many, many, many years. But there was a part when I started where I told you I was totally, I didn't know what a complete sentence was. I didn't know what a subject verb was. I used to bring, somebody told me, I would ask everybody, what does that word mean? Carry a dictionary, man. I did, I got a little dictionary. And I was looking up words. And eventually I started making some progress, you know? And you got to start. If not, you're going to be dependent your whole life on people feeding you. Hey, so-and-so, he's been a Christian 30 years. Oh, man, really? He knows how to make meals. No, I can't even. We got to give him baby food. We'll go get those Gerber jars and feed him. Really? At 30? Yeah, we even have to put a bib on him. <laughs> so, why? so he don't slobber his food all over himself. And that's what some people do. I read some of the stuff on Facebook and listen to someone. And I just got out of leave. They're worse than babies. Okay. You can tell that they don't obey God. They don't study his word. God isn't really showing them. What they're learning is cliches or something they heard from somebody else. They're more of an echo of what somebody else is or a parrot. There's nothing original with them. Okay. And God doesn't want that. He wants you to be an original. Okay. So someday that he can display to you as he says in Ephesians, that we're his poetic expression for all the universe to see. That's what he wants. Okay. So he's going to teach you all things and bring to remembrance the things I say. Well, I'm going to bring to remembrance anything that you haven't studied. It's not possible. Okay. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. You know, you don't have to take a quad loop or Ambien or whatever it else is or drink a martini at night in order to get peace. And I've heard Christians, ah, oh, let's just relax. We'll go for that, but then you're not going to get what the Holy Spirit can give. There's nothing like going to bed at night filled with the Holy Spirit. And we're going to talk about that too, the difference between being filled and being baptized in the Holy Spirit, which a lot of people get confused. Okay. Uh, let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. There's a good, good promise there. You heard that I said to you, I go away and I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I go to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Now, I have told you before it comes to pass that when it comes to pass, you may believe. I will not speak much more with you for the ruler of this world. Who is that? Satan is coming. He's here now. Okay. Who's the ruler of this world? The Satan is. Why do you think you have so many different worldviews and various types of governments and all that that are anti-God? What do you think is going on in America right now? And I, see, I hear Christians support it. You know, these Democrats and these liberals and these leftists and all that, uh, it, they have Satan as their influencer. And Satan uses the media to communicate his message, and these people borrow that and do it. They don't know God. Okay, and that's why you see, I wonder, I question whether they're, really know God because if they don't if they would obey God God would disclose to him his wisdom and they would recognize this because the Bible says in first Corinthians train your the senses to discern that which is from God and that which is not to me it's so obvious and I and, and it is to a lot of people but if you're not clued in then maybe you need to question whether you're truly born again or not okay I would Seriously, it's just not why you're still alive. You have an opportunity. Okay, I will not speak much more for the rule of this world is coming. He has nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father and the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go from here. He's about to make a change. Okay, we're going to get into John chapter 15. He's going to talk about the vine and the branches. This is very interesting. You know, so what do we learn today? If you are a believer and you truly love God, it's not hard to be obedient to the person that you love. I hear these wives or husbands say they love their husband or wives, but they're rebellious at each other and they compete with, they don't love each other. They're more about being right than they are about being mutually agreeable. And so God makes it really clear. If you love me, you're going to obey me. 
but I'm going to give you, if when, you know, in your obedience, you're going to get a lot of insight. You're going to get the paraclete. You're going to get the helper. He's going to come alongside of you, and he's going to help you and guide you. You don't need to go to seminary or Bible college to learn insight from God's Word. You just need to be obedient. You need to be in that abode and that fellowship. And when you're there, I mean, some of the most brilliant uh, theologians and Bible teacher I never went to Bible school or seminary, you know. Um, in fact, for a, a lot of them, is, that may be a detriment. So God bless you today. I, I, I want to thank the person. Next time, I'm going to be up here. Writing, you got that? I'm writing this down here. <laughs> i got to figure out how far away to get. Where you can, can you still see me? Way out here. <laughs> And where I can write, where you can see it. So I know they have some cameras that do this. I don't have that. It is what it is. It's fixed. I don't have multiple cameras from different angles and all that. It's just right there. I would like to, but maybe that's down the road somewhere. Okay, God bless you. It's Sunday. Have a good day. Go and do the right thing.